Hello, welcome to Learn Swift for Beginners, Lesson 5. In today's lesson, we're going to talk about loops. When you're writing your app, there's going to be many times you're going to find yourself needing to repeat pieces of code. For instance, let's say you're showing five things in your app and you need to turn each of them red. So a loop is going to allow you to just write that single line of code to turn something red and you can repeat it five times for each of those five objects. And that's going to save you from having to uh, write out that code five times. So that's a very simplified example. But trust me, you're going to use them a lot. So let's take a look at how to use them. So there are three types of loops we're going to cover today. We're going to start with the for in loop, as you can see in the Swift programming guide here. So let's go ahead and start a new playground in our Xcode. And I'm just going to call this the loop playground and save it on my desktop. Now a for in loop allows you to repeat a piece of code a certain specified number of times. If you have a list of data, otherwise known as an array, which you're going to learn about in an upcoming lesson, you can also use a for in loop to go through each of those pieces of data in that array and execute some sort of code on it. So this is perfect for the example we mentioned in the intro about having five objects or five items on the screen and you need to turn each of them red, for example. So let's start with learning how to use a for in loop to repeat a piece of code for a specified number of times. And when you guys learn about arrays, um, I'll show you how to use a for and loop to go through each piece of data in that array. So as you can see, true to its name, the keywords to use here are for and in. So you start with the keyword for and next you have a variable name. Now you don't have to declare this variable using the var keyword like you've learned in the previous lessons. You can simply have a name for this variable because you're only going to refer to this variable within the for in loop. This variable that you specify here is going to keep track of which iteration of the loop is currently running. Next up, you have the keyword in, and then you have the lower range followed by dot, 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 and then the upper range. And that last part there after the in keyword is the range which your for loop is going to run in and it's inclusive of those numbers. So for example, if you have one dot 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 five, it's actually going to run five times. And then after that, you open a set of curly brackets and inside the set of curly brackets, that's where you're gonna put the code that you want to repeat for that number of times. So let's jump back to the playground and let's do a quick demo on that for in loop. So I have the for keyword here and for my variable, I can specify something like index and then I would put in and let's use that same example one to five. And then I open up a set of curly brackets and then here I'm simply going to print hello. And we're going to see this in the console down here. It is printed it five times. Now, part of the reason why you specify a variable name here called index is because you want to use that um, that number or this variable inside your for loop here. So for example, I can do something like this where I can say print index and you're going to see that index changes from one, two, three, four, five, depending on which iteration of the loop it is. It keeps track of basically where we're at in this range right here as we're looping through it. But again, what we've specified here as a counter is only available inside the scope here in between these curly brackets. I can't specify, you know, printing index out here. It's not going to recognize it. Okay, so we can't do that. Um, and furthermore, if you don't need to use index inside your for loop, you can very simply place an underscore there. So this is perfect for the example that we had initially, 
where we're just printing hello five times, we don't really need um, a counter of any sort, or we don't need to refer to index, we don't care which iteration it's currently at. One thing I want to mention, which is confusing often for beginners, is this idea of scope here. For example, if I wanted to sum up the numbers from 1 to 5, and I wanted to print out the result after the for loop, um, let's say I declare a variable up here and I call it sum, and I equate it to 0, and then I say something like sum plus equals, and actually let's add this index variable back here and I go like this. Now you haven't seen this plus equals um, sign yet but this operator basically um, equates to something like this. It takes sum and it adds the index so this is equivalent to writing this. It's just kind of like a short form. Okay so first of all if I declare this variable called sum inside my for loop, inside these curly brackets, well, this variable is only available within that scope, within these two curly brackets. I can't go out here, outside of the for loop, after it's run five times, and print out the result of sum. See, you can see that it can't find this variable, even though I've declared it in here. Okay, so why don't we move this print statement into the for loop? What would you expect to happen in this case? Well, we get one, two, three, four, five again. And why is it that this sum isn't increasing? Why isn't it continually adding index to it? And, you know, why aren't I getting the sum of the numbers from one to five by the last iteration of the loop? Well, what's happening is that um, in the first iteration of the loop, we're declaring sum equals to zero, and then we're adding index to sum, which is one, and then we're printing sum. So that's why we get one down here. In the second iteration of the loop, what we're doing is we're declaring sum again, we're setting it to zero, and we are adding, um, this time the index is two, and we're adding two to zero, right? And then it's going to print two. So that's why you can see the output 2 right there. Well, right now, you might point out to me, hey, Chris, I thought you said that you can't redeclare the same variable. You know, in the first iteration of the loop, we're declaring var sum, right? And then in the second iteration of the loop, we're redeclaring var sum. That's, that's illegal. That's not allowed. In fact, you might say that, you know, if I declare var string again up here, it's going to throw an error. Right? We, we can't redeclare the same variable because um, we've declared this guy up here. We can't redeclare it using the var again. And I would say that's true, except that in each iteration of the loop, it's almost as if it doesn't remember what happened in the previous iteration. There's no memory or recollection of the previous iteration. So each iteration is kind of like a clean slate, and it's going to execute this code right here. So just to say that again, you're right if you're saying that I can't redeclare sum, right? Because if I tried to do that right here, Xcode would throw an error. However, inside of a loop in this scope right here, each iteration of the loop is like a clean slate, okay? Now, if I wanted to actually find out the sum of the numbers from one to five, what I would actually do is I would move this declaration up here outside of the loop. And then what I would do this way, I could move this print statement outside of the loop. And what this for in loop will do is simply loop from one to five each time adding index to the sum. And now I'm actually keeping track of the sum. So you can see that after five iterations of the loop, adding the numbers from one to five into sum, which started out as zero, um, the result is 15 down here. And that's from this print statement. Okay, so I'm going to stop the lesson there. While the syntax for the for in loop is actually pretty simple and, and the concept of repeating a piece of code for a certain number of time is pretty simple, 
I want to give you some breathing room to digest what we talked about uh, in regards to the variable scope. So I would recommend that you try declaring and creating this loop on your own computer. Um, try declaring the variables inside the loop and outside the loop and see where you can access them and use them and where you cannot. Um, it's really going to help and aid you in your learning. If you like this lesson, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. It's going to help the channel gain some more exposure and visibility, and it's really going to help me out. So thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye for now.